Catch him on the counter. Uh, this is going to be fun. Last time Carolina came to Winston-Salem was in 2017. It's been a while. And you could tell just by the energy at training the other day here at Wake Forest, the Deacons know that the Tar Heels are coming to town, and here they are. No Macy Bell at the back for Chapel Hill. It's a tough loss to them. She's been an incredible player for them over the last few years. Yeah, that is something to watch. Getting back from the injury she had last season. I know Coach Dorrance is happy that she's back, but uh, not suited up, or at least not in the starting lineup tonight. As here's Hanks gets the pass from Malika Mina. In the first opening minutes, I expect a pretty high press here starting from Wake. Chapel Hill loves to have the ball, and then talking to Coach Toulouse, like they think they can really get after the center backs in their possession. We'll see how long this match goes until it is open up. This is usually a feeling out process that first couple of minutes in that ACC match. Both teams know how crucial it is within the standings. Wake Forest happy to be home as that ball's played right off the back of Small. Here's Dipsy Brown. I think I still hear cicadas. It's October, mid of October. We're getting these summer bugs. 80 degrees today. The summer's still lingering, but the season is coming close to an end with four matches remaining. Ansbrock was outstanding at USLW this summer for the courage. And John, you saw her. She's been big using that summer to propel her into this fall. I've got a chance to see her play a lot. She's been at, you know, for the courage in the youth level, now in the USLW, now playing for, for Wake. Um, Lovely player in terms of technique. Obviously, you, you can't miss the size and her ability to dominate physically. Um, but the, the real underrated factor for her is that she is a dynamic leader. She is a vocal presence. To me, she is no more mature player on the field than her. John Pardini also he coaches for USL W, NC Fusion. He knows a lot about the game and tactics and strategy. Here is Swanson. Swanson trying to get away. and. Ball taken away from sh by Shores as Shores looks up. The numerical advantage right now for Wake Forest and Carolina trying to waste some time to get some numbers back down to their attacking third. So you see the formation Carolina's running with. If you're the coach, what, what would your strategy be against a formation like that? Well, there's, there's not too many weak links when it comes to the individual players. <laughs> um, so now you're talking about, okay, what can we look to exploit based off of the tactical situation that they're presenting? And Chapel Hill is a team that loves to get numbers forward. They absolutely want to dominate the midfield presence. And that's why you see that kind of little box in midfield. But if you're awake, you're, you're biding your time, you're looking. She assisted Emily Colton's goal against Duke in that uh, 59th minute. And she was able to get loose. Turns into a corner kick for the Tar Heels. And out off her line and snatching it out of the air is Peyton Cahill. Who Maybe to her surprise, getting a lot of playing time after some injuries in that department. Yeah, Maddie Howard out with the what looks to be like a low ankle injury. Um, one of those kids that's tough as nails, so if she has to come out, clearly there's something wrong there. Um, but for Cahill, what an awesome start to get and come out and claim your first ball. Makes it nice and easy, you get a little confidence going into the rest of the game. And you're talking to Coach Deleuze, he said that because Cahill is back there, the defense actually tightens up a little bit uh, in a good way. Like they, they want to protect her because they know she's kind of new to this and she didn't expect to start. It says that defense kind of steps up a little bit more. They're kind of relying on, on Maddie Howard just because she's been a seasoned vet. But uh, so when Cahill's there, the last time they were in town against Virginia, uh, they had a clean sheet, 2-0 over Virginia, ranked Virginia, and it was a big win, a big celebration for the Deacons. They went on the road for a tough road trip, but now they're back and taking on, yes, number three, North Carolina. The culture within this team for Wake is incredible. A lot of the girls really care for each other and for 
for a girl like Kay Hill, um, the, the teams want to pull for her. All the players are rooting for her. Yeah, Coach Salou said she is a big, big uh, part of that locker room. Uh, she is very well loved by the entire team. And see if they can Later spring the small loose as that ball's played up and good job defensively. Carolina doesn't allow many goals, but trying to look for small breaking through the lines. Good defense by Hare. Kaylee Hare is able to keep that away from small. So in the 4 2 4, you'll see Nikayla look, looking to bypass occasionally Murphy or vice versa, and it goes. You know, in, in between the two gaps of the back three, um, which puts those those three center backs in conflict. A foul called, I believe, on Meza. And she decided to use the tackle, but from behind. So it'll be a free kick for Wake Forest. This is a good spot. If they want to jump on the scoreboard really, really quickly. Yeah, from this distance, you're not really looking to shoot. You're looking to create some sort of interaction between forwards, backs, and the goalkeeper, see if you can kind of put someone in conflict. Shiboshi sending it in. Shiboshi may get a rip of this, but uh, that one kind of drifted up on her ankle, and she sent it high and over. I'd like to see that first ball get a little bit over that first defender to cause a little bit more problems for Chapel Hill, put Emmy Allen under, under test. Exactly. Yeah, that's the that's first thing when you've got a free kick like that, and I've said this many times, is see if you can make it so tempting for that goalie to come off the line and then crash. So as we watch the build-up for Chapel Hill, you'll see some of the wake players, especially those wingers, maybe try and force the ball a little bit inside. Dempsey Brown, outstanding freshman from Winter Park, Florida. I like Amina. Part of the Arsenal Academy for coming over here to Winston-Salem. Swanson, look at the link up with Colton. And look at the defense by Dempsey Brown. It is draped over the back. It will be a free kick for the Tar Heels. I'd love to see the referee just play on a little bit there. I think the player steps around, does a good job. No, no real advantage for anybody, but hopefully he doesn't get too involved in the game. Here comes Carolina moving all the way down using these numbers. See if they can get a goal. It was so dangerous. Now, there's going to be a foul called on Wake Forest here, so kind of switch roles. This time, Carolina will get a free kick. Foul from the back. Just a little late. So now the Tar Heels with Sintnor. And this kid is a rising star in the words of coach Anson Dorrance. She's got on her right foot here, but she's a kid that can hit it with both feet. Don't think she'll go for goal, but it is a new you know, second string goalkeeper for Wake. Might want to test her early. And she's going to at least give it a ride, and that one's a little too high and over the bar, but Sittner actually shifted from forward to midfield. Got five goals and three assists on the year. Three game winners on this season, Southern Cowell, Arkansas, and UVA. She is a huge weapon and high praise from the legendary coach when we spoke to him yesterday. And I think that it's not about the position for her. It's more about just finding ways to get her on the ball. And she drops back into midfield. She's allowed to create more. Good idea by Carolina, just could not link up. Wake Forest did a good job defensively as there was an option to the left. That was Patterson. Patterson just has a nose for goal to Carolina getting the ball right back. And they'll play it right to the midway line. Here's the part where you need real good discipline within your midfield and forward group, especially defensively. Another thing that Coach Deleuze told us yesterday was you know, UNC can hurt you many, 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 many ways, but they can also push that ball, pump the ball in. You saw the long ball looking for that corner flag. There's Coach Deleuze in his 27th season and just got that 300th win. Big win for him. It's Coach Deleuze. Got a chance to talk to him two days ago and 
after that tough road trip to Syracuse and then Pittsburgh. They're just happy to be home. And he told me, he says, they know it, that we're up against it right now. A through ball that gets through, but the flag goes up. And it'll be an offside call on De La Puerta. There's the legendary coach, Anson Dorrance. He was the U.S. women's national coach. I talked to him yesterday. Well, we talked to him, right? Yep. And he, had the, he had the duties of not only U.S. women's national team, but the men's and the women's team at Carolina and was able to get the first star for the U.S. women's national team. And he said that was a, a moment he'll never forget. While he was in law school. As yeah, well. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Add to it. It's no question. Anson's a worker. And, and you know, even in his, in his age now, this guy is someone that puts in the hours, and really speaks highly of his staff. Damon Nahas took over he took over in terms of some of the training and the team tactical com components, but Anson is a great manager of people, and that's really what makes him so special. Well, it's not a good sight there is a tangle up between Swanson and a Carolina player. And that might be. Elgin that is down and uh, hopefully she'll be all right. You just hate to see somebody is grimacing in pain. So it's uh, Shores actually that's Shores. down. She's a freshman from West Hills, California. Already just mentioned by Top Drawer Soccer as a midseason top 100 freshman and she was listed at number two. Or, excuse me, that was a uh, uh, Evelyn Shore, she's from Atlanta, Georgia. She is the number seven recruit. So just go down the list. And hopefully she'll will be all right. It's got four goals and three assists on the season with two game winners. And she's also just recovered from a surgery last year. And she is described as a very creative player. I mean, just add to the artillery that the Tar Heels get year after year. Yeah, she typically plays alongside Sam Meza, and they've posed a real good uh, midfield group. She has the creativity to kind of show feet, to get in behind, to, to move into wide positions. I hate to see her go down. No, it's, not, yeah, it's not a very good sight at all. What a talented player. And I mean, just like copious amounts of players on this roster, she got to go to U20 camp. And to prepare herself for that, she played with the high school men's team just to get her ready to go and the U-20 camp. And as they take a look at this injury and a Swanson getting tangled up with Shores. Ooh. So I thought that Swanson initiated the contact. I was wrong that Shores going to win in and got hurt there on putting out the foot as Swanson was hoping to push that up in front and keep going out of touch line. So we wish her the best. Hopefully she'll be all right just to, just to knock. Uh, she's a very talented freshman brought in by Coach Dorrance. Of course, year after year, they bring in the best recruits. There's pretty much a novel for each player <laughs> on this roster. So Talia De La Puerta will come in. And for Anson, Two sisters now. And for Anson and his staff, you, you know, everybody thinks that they're, you know, they have a, a wide range of any kind of player. But when you're talking about the, the ACC, the SEC, and how powerful all these recruiting staffs are, it, it's super challenging to, to bring in the best players. And um, you rely heavily on your relationships and people you trust. And they've done a good job at not only just fostering relations, relationships in and out of the, the youth level, but also abroad internationally and even in the pro game can't be that hard to recruit to Carolina, right? Just show the, show the stars and show uh, the players that have donned the jersey. I think when you're talking about competing against most of the NCAA, yes, but when you're talking about competing against Stanford and yeah. Florida State for that like elite, elite top level player, um, it is super challenging. You gotta put your best face forward every time. Now that rivalry between Carolina and Florida State has really blossomed as of late. 
I think blockbuster it, of a game that they had or finished 3-3. Three, three. One of the things that you got to love about Chapel Hill and their staff is significantly about their ability to bring in a certain type of player. And it's not about the technical ability. It's not about the athleticism. Yes, it's there. But for Anson and the staff, it's about he wants competitive people. This guy has built on and thrived on it. Everybody knows about his competitive cauldron. But what they also don't know is he's a roller hockey player that's competitive <laughs> jerk. He's a pickleball guy that's competitive jerk. He, he is built that way. Yeah, you look uh, – yeah, he's very competitive, even just on a, a Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you could see the last tournament champions, the last five seasons, uh, how Florida State has been really the team to beat, and Carolina is not going to take too kindly to that just because, well, they're rated as one of the best dynasties in all sports. And that's when you talk about, you know, with Anson, with, with trying to bring in the best of the best player. Um, you know, everybody's been capped by most of their kids that they bring in. So when you're looking at who's the best U17 national team player currently in existence, well, Florida State's talking about it with them. UCLA's talking about it with them. Stanford's talking about it with them. Well, his record, and yes. sometimes I have to look twice at his record just to say, is that really possible? Then I go down the whole list. Like five losses is the most he has had in a season. And Last year he had five losses, but they got to the championship and, in my opinion, should have won it. Yeah, the, you know, everybody looks back at the, the late decision on the goal, you know, whether or not it was a foul on, on the keeper or not. It, it's always a tough thing when it comes to sports, and the, the margins are so, so small. But, you know, when you speak with Anson about it, he, he doesn't look at it that way. He, yeah. He's going, hey, we, we gave absolutely everything we could. Um, it just fell a little bit short, but that's the maturity of a, a coach who's been there for as long as he has and done it as well as anybody. That surprised me because, you know, how, how he's so competitive, right? And then you, you play in the championship, and you've got it in the bag. I mean, was there seconds remaining, and then there's this call that should have been a call that wasn't called, and Anson Dorrance just says... Well, in the game of soccer, sometimes we'll get the roll, the roll on our side, and sometimes it goes against us. And I was like, is this the same guy that we're talking about that's been so competitive, like in roller hockey and pickleball? When you're in coaching, um, you've been a part of thousands and thousands and thousands of games, and there's really only one word to chalk up most things, and it's just sports. Simple as that. He's a class act. He spoke with us for an hour. Incredibly, an hour. I told my wife, I said, we were on the Zoom call on our porch with Anson Dorrance for an hour. She's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> nice to see the crowd come alive. Yeah, they're, they're having a battle against the Tar Heel fans that are represented. So far, though, John, I mean, it's... And to me, I think it's kind of calmer than I thought maybe the first, say, 20 minutes of this match would be. Yeah, I think the injury plays a factor into that. It's a little low in the game. You get to relax for a minute or two. What a um, rip As a ball. player, you maybe make a little adjustments, talk team tactics with them. That was hit well by Sentinor and straight to the gloves. But look, very little rotation. Cahill able to knock that one down. And watch the press. Carolina will be relentless in their press. As Coach Deleuze worked on that in his training time two days ago. The thing about Sentinel is she has the ability to create on her own uh, and left foot or right foot. So when you're, you're matched up her in a 1v1 situation, super challenging to know, hey, where do I force or what do I deal with? And then obviously, as you can see, she can hit it from distance. And the thing that makes her elite is you talked about the ball movement. The ball that she strikes with left peg and right right peg, it dips downward. It causes nightmares for goalkeepers. Now especially with how the, these uh, soccer balls are now. You know, they've got that wicket. <laughs> kind of uh, those indentions that make the spin and difficult for goalies to read. They need to bring the old Jubilani goal yes. balls back. <laughs> I remember when that first came out and everybody was some of the rumors like it doesn't matter how hard you hit it like it's going to dip spin around it's like a nerf ball 
As now Wake Forest trying to work into their attacking third. They've done a really good job of keeping the Tar Heels somewhat quiet. Only one shot. And that shot, of course, was Sintnor that was from deep. Getting Michaela on the ball is going to be crucial for Wake. She's clever. She uses her body incredibly well, can spin a player on a dime, and then obviously is one of the leading assist getters. She can create, especially with a good use of disguise. Shavoshi. She wanted to go down the touch line, sent it the center ball for Murphy, and Murphy maybe possibly trying to flick that on for somebody to run behind. And you got a goalkeeper by the name of Emmy Allen. That's uh, that's a lot of work to try to see if you can get past one. If you're a young past her. If you're a young player watching this game, Sam Meza's movement as a six, she's gonna drift behind Nikayla Small to the left or the right of her and then get faced up. She's one of those really clever and creative players, and I think that's why Tony has put him in a 4-2-4 to kind of screen Sam a little bit more so she's not able to get on the ball, and that forces them to maybe play a little bit more dynamic or have to go out through the wide channels. So he brought back for another free kick for the Tar Heels. As Elgin plays it back. Hare, the center back, going back and forth with her and King. Mezzo wants it, she will get it. As Carolina trying to orchestrate an attack right here in the midfield and it will test Cahill. So far, not too many touches for Colton. It must be her sister doing a pretty good job just screening her a little bit. Here's a switch, and there's some space. Johnson and a run on to try to defend it. Ansbrough there to clean it up. And once again, the Tar Heels, they move that line all the way up. Going back to the Colton sisters, I had a chance to talk with some of the Wake players earlier today. A few of them I coached, and, and the one thing that was a resounding um, thought from all of them was how positively they all speak about each other. Yeah. Both the Colton sisters. And when you're, you know, when you're in opposite schools, you're going, ah, you know. But when you listen to them talk about one another, um, you know, as a parent, you're probably really thrilled about it. But um, they speak really, really highly of both their talents and the things that they're working on and their ability and, and then just the, the kind of people they are. That's great. That's a, that's exactly what you want from your siblings to be, you know, it's to, to all your kids that they're able to pump each other up. Because at the end of the day, that's uh, that's the number one teammate. Yeah. Even if they're not wearing the same color. You guarantee at the end of the match, yeah. though. I'm pretty sure Abby's going to be like, yeah, we won. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Johnson trying to move up. Talking with Tony about Abby, he says that, you know, she is one of those kids that has just worked for everything that's been given to her. Um, she is the heart of their midfield work ethic. She'll run through a brick wall is what he's described her as. And that's always a good thing to have as a, as a holding midfielder. You know you can count on them, especially as a center back. They're going to clean things up for you. And then as a, mid, as a forward, you're going to go, okay, she's going to join the press and do all the dirty work. He's definitely involved, and a lot so, of course, this year. we got a twin rivalry as one of the many storylines in this match. Murphy and Swanson double team, and Murphy gets it back. Meza wrestles it away from Murphy. Here's the long ball. Dempsey Brown posting up right there on the back of De La Puerta, Tori De La Puerta. A miscommunication there with Mina and Johnson. And it's fortunately for the home side that was knocked out of bounds in a throw in for the Demon Deacons. Physicality picked up a little bit there. Nice to also see the referee kind of letting them play a little bit, get the rhythm back to the game. Just under 23 minutes remaining in the first half. To our astonishment, there's only been one shot between these two teams. And that shot was about maybe 18 plus. Maybe, what'd you say, 20? 20 yards. And yeah, historic. It's on frame. 
historically, when we get to around that 15 minute mark left in the half, you start to see, you know, Anson bring in his his crew, um, that six seven player uh, substitution as he did uh, against Duke the other night. Timsey Brown, risky tackle. This is looking promising for the Tar Heel. Shavoshi, nice step. And Payhill, uh, Cahill, Peyton Cahill trying to jump on top of it. As Shavoshi showing just how crucial she is on that back line. Excellent job at fighting across the forward here. He's made a very good run. You see Della Peruta make that run in behind. Excellent job to get just ball side of her to make a play. Shavoshi is so soft-spoken, but then you get her on the pitch, and she is. And she's aggressive. Big part of the success of this back line for the Demon Deacons is Murphy trying to control it. Excellent hold-up play yep. there. Unable to turn, but that's what she's been good at, is holding up the ball. Here's Swanson. Into space, pinching in, trying to send one to Small. Small rushing on as the Deacons and the ball within the reach. With a switch of play like that, you'd love to see either Swanson kind of drive end line or allow time to get Zavoshi to get forward. Um, because in the back three, you're going to want to stay centrally for Chapel Hill, so the space is going to be out on those flanks, especially off those quick switches. So, Coach, uh, what are your thoughts so far in this play? Uh, just 25 minutes into yeah. this one? Yeah, I, everybody's possession-based so far. Um, so from a you know stylistic perspective, it looks nice, but you, when you're talking about chance creation, it's the ability to get behind the opposing team's back, and neither team has shown, whether it's through combination play or whether it's through a direct play, to be able to get into those wide flanks or get into those kind of penalty area situations. Coming in for Carolina, somebody you know very well, Isabel Cox. This is now 102 career matches that she's appeared in, which is, that is a lot of matches. She is among the best of Division I players in that category. Last season, she was uh, one of the starters, 15 starts out of 26 appearances, had two goals, eight assists. But we talked to uh, Coach Dorrance. He said, uh, he said, you know what, she is accepted the role and once again being a, a teammate that you expected too because of her character. I've got to work with Izzy when she was a youth player, got to coach her a little bit and then got to coach her even in our USLW uh, a couple of years back. Um, the thing about Izzy that I find fascinating, obviously ridiculously good athlete, but she's had virtually no injuries. In, in, in youth sports and collegiate sports, like that's something you see very frequently, but this girl takes incredibly good care of herself and obviously, as you described, she takes incredibly good care of her teammates. And she is well-liked, and she adapts to any role. She's just thrilled. She's always been, since she was about 15 years old, just always just happy to be out there. Didn't matter if it was two minutes or 90 minutes. She's a kid that's like, yeah, just excited to play. Excited to be a part of it. Well, she stepped up in a big way last season with the injuries that the Tar Heels had. She had two assists during the NCAA tournament, one versus Georgia, then the other one against BYU. Yeah, you talk about her character, just watch the girl press. I mean, that says a lot. Pressing is one of the toughest things to do. It's nothing but running. And you watch the way in which she does it consistently, game in, game out, minute in, minute one, minute 90. That speaks a lot to her heart, her character, and who she is as a person. Mina. Kept with the ball, did not get, big, get, did not get knocked off of it. And uh, she is a very entertaining player in the center of the pitch, just like Meza is for the Tar Heels. And those are the moments for Chapel Hill when they do pick off passes out of midfield. You'd love to see them be able to create a little bit more to see if they can get behind Wake's back line. Murphy in the middle of three Tar Heel defenders. That just shows the respect of her former team. They know how good she is. They know how she can hold the ball up and as well as kill you with the ball if she wants to surge ahead.
King's a player, the more and more you watch her, the more comfortable you, you, you're shocked that she's a freshman. Yeah. You know, does a great job in possession, excellent 1v1 defender. Here's a chance here if they could slip it. Tar Heels poaching, and here's a shot still with some pace. And that's again by Sentner. With another very good paced shot. I think if you're weak, though, you're kind of, you're fine with a shot from 25. You know, the, the where it gets really tough and, and challenging is when it's within the 18-yard box. Now you're really asking Cahill to be to make a, a tremendous save. But from 25 yards yep. out, 30 yards out, it's not too difficult for a player like Cahill. Yeah, I think that's one that you'll take and as long as you're not getting inside that 18. And I got to watch some Chapel Hill play Duke the other night, and th this has a very, very similar vibe. Chapel Hill had a lot of the ball at different times and then occasionally susceptible to the counter, but didn't create a ton in terms of getting behind the opponent. It was a late goal by Duke to, and then a draw, five draws this season for Chapel Hill. Of course, that Florida State match went down to the wire, and then Florida State evened it up. Late, late goal. Ending in 3-3. What an epic match that was. 16 minutes remaining in the first half. And we are locked at nil-nil. See Wake slowing the game down a bit. Taking your time to get set up, which makes a ton of sense. You want the game put into moments. Also allows <laughs> you know, Ansborough to get forward, yeah. take your time. We'll see what they... Yeah, no, whip up here. No Macy Bell to defend these set pieces. This is a huge advantage if you can get good service. Driven and then rising. And it looked like Andrew may have had a small hair on that, but that was definitely the intended target. Terrific service here. A ton of pace, not too much height. Gives everybody a chance. And if that's on frame, yeah, Emmy Allen might not have a chance, even if there is no touch. Because as a goalkeeper, you got to honor and expect there's going to be a redirect. That was a good look, and it was a good ball. They still sit nil-nil. Crucial game for the Demon Deacons. Carolina unbeaten this season. They were number one. They dropped to number three. After a tie against Duke. Looks like Chapel Hood made most of their changes with the exception of the back line. Cox able to settle that nicely. And playing on the outside, or excuse me, the touch line was Darlene. Good timing to tackle there. Such both groups, so tough to break down. Mina. She wanted to continue to come here to the near side, but decided to play it back to Ansbrow. And both groups are really trying to play through the lines, which, which is fine, but the space is not there in midfield. The space is going to be out wide in this game. It's going to be behind the opposing team's outside backs or for Chapel Hill, you know, in the wide channels of their center backs. It's coach to lose again, looking on. He has been called the mad scientist. He has been known to kind of mix things up, throw you out for a loop. Well, talking with the players, it's kind of funny. They, 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 they do a ton of scouting. And so when they're going through the scouting reports on Wake and they're looking at the Duke game, well, Duke used the same formation that Wake did for their UVA game. And now Chapel, uh, sorry, Wake, Wake's using their formation as they did against Chapel Hill. So it's kind of funny to see coaches take little influences from them, the little tactical battles that they try and adjust to. That ball got over and did have a chance that was knocked around in the 18. And some nervy moments for the Demon Deacons. Nice step. Able to pull that back. Shavoshi. Yes. Very little room. It's really good discipline to win the ball, but now you've got as weight, you've got to be able to keep it in those one, two passes. So Emily Morris has come on for the home side. Very talented midfielder.
so far just watching Mina. She's a really good link up player. It does a lot of work in terms of helping and supporting the build up. You can kind of see uh, when the ball goes into Cahill and she's starting the attack, she kind of looks to play through Mina and that just speaks to her ability as a, as a creator in their build up for Wake. We've had a couple of start and stops in this match in this first half as the clock ticks down to 12 minutes remaining. Wake Forest still searching for their first attempt. One of the very talented in the Allen in the net, redshirt sophomore. She has career 14 shutouts in two seasons at Chapel Hill. Right now, the tempo between lines, you know, when whether it's Chapel Hill's midfield facing up or whether it's Wake's midfield facing up, there needs to be a change of tempo if you want to really unlock the opponent. Right now, you see most central midfielders taking two, sometimes three touches, and obviously you get the turnover, um, but the tempo needs to change if you want to create chances. Cahill will have a chance to work with her feet. Lovely, lovely touch nice, there. Lo lovely, clever back heel and Swanson knocks it off the face of hair that goes out of bounds and that's the moment right ball gets played into a midfield player you know Zavoshi's kind of moved inside a great ball by Kehill and then the one touch flick all of a sudden creates a chance right. I think Swanson would just like the technique tip back a little bit as she did have um, Murphy making a little running behind Morris and Swanson working. Here's Murphy near the byline. Sends a beautiful ball. Here's a shot. It just kind of got caught up in the chamber. Deacons rushing on. Here comes a wave of an attack here. Ansbrell up into the fracas. Excellent job by Murphy getting the end line. And then the clever little dummy leaves the ball for the, for the late runner. Colton. Wilson was right there in the middle. I was actually surprised that ball sat on her foot. And look at the movement of that ball. Deacons, they smell blood in the water. And Swanson is going to be called. And being in an offside position, the flag goes up. And that will negate any type of attack that Wake Forest was creating there. Yeah, here's Murphy getting that. I love this little dummy right there. Oh. You'd love to see it go one time, but maybe the player's not ready for it. But... Either way, it's a great moment for Wake, one they'll want to have back. That's just reflexes, too. Just once you get the ball sitting there and just kind of knocking it to your right, just enough, enough to create some space to put a good pace on it. And when you're playing against a defensive team like Carolina, they're not going to allow you that much time. Is Dempsey kind of lost her balance, a little shoving action. Under 10 to go in the first half. Some promising moments for the Demon Deacons, desperately seeking some points. And they bounce. Had a goal on a beautiful play ball by Emily Murphy. But the stout defense of the Tar Heels, who play on there, did not allow enough time for at least a shot, a chance on frame. Now the Tar Heels into the attacking third. A terrific little overlap and run there to get that extra number forward, cause some problems in the wide areas. This is sent well. And escaping in free. And that's the ball you want to play close to the six. Wake Forest did a good job of marking, but still the Tar Heels knocking on the door again. That's what you love to see from Wake, though. 11 players behind the ball. You know, no one's no one's standing up at the front line going, hey, good luck, defenders. Excellent job in the recovery defense. Another attempt by the Tar Heels. I think they have they have been given the green light to test Cahill. They've had a couple long-distance shots. That one, of course, by Elgin. Well, it's twofold, right? You feel like you've had some of the ball, and you, you get into an area where you think, ah, maybe I'll have a go here. And, and sometimes out of frustration, you maybe take a shot from a little bit more distance. I think you'd love to see them maybe trying to combine or outplay um, as they get a little closer into the box. Four shots for the Tar Heels, two on frame. And Wake Forest has been credited with one shot. Probably had the best looking opportunity of this entire first half. 
Well, we still sit deadlocked, nil-nil. As the Tar Heels trying to figure out their attack against the back line of the Demon Deacons. So far, what I'm seeing from the players is they seem to be able to put in a ton of pace behind some of their passes. And on the surface, which is absolutely gorgeous, but just a little bit of slickness in terms of the weather tonight. And I think that kind of speeds up the tempo of the ball. So, so you've seen some first touches get a little run away from the player. You see that kind of first time layoff run away or not be as accurate. Ansbrough's confidence off the mark there. Just she is all over the place. Very good defensively and a captain as well. She has, her game, you can tell she just expels confidence. As Tar Heels now trying to work. Flag is up. And this will be a yellow card given to Wilson there. So with that yellow card, will supply a very, very good opportunity for the Tar Heels. Close to that 18, you know how deadly they are. Yeah, you see her get the wrong side of her, and, and it's the na natural reaction. You can see, watch her grab the little shirt, denying the counter. It's a definite yellow when you so do it's that. it's a professional kind of foul, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> smart, smart foul. Yeah, you'd like sure. to do it a little bit further away from goal, but you know, you also could think that that player can get into the penalty area and get byline, which all of a sudden the percentages right. of the score go way up. Let me ask you, I mean, you're, as a coach, if you see a player do that, that was Alex Wood, are you upset with them? Hold that thought real quick as, they, as uh, Carolina will get ready for their set piece and a very, very good opportunity to get on the board. It's clipped in, and that is headed over the bar. Who touched it last? They'll say Wake Forest did, and it's a corner. But if, if a player of yours does a foul like that, professional foul, it makes sense to do it to you. You don't get too upset with them, right? Yeah, especially, you know, anything that's not in the penalty area, the, the percentages to score are still quite low. So when you get the wrong side of a player, it occasionally happens. It's a natural reaction for a player to either grab or chop a player down. Um, obviously, now she's on a yellow, so she has to act, act differently when it comes to her future defending moments. Moxley will take the corner from the near flag. High arcing and curling in, and there's a push. And that will give Wake Forest the ball back. Good job defending by Swanson there, who kind of puts herself in harm's way, gets up, gets the first touch on the ball from a defensive header. Again, speaking as you described earlier with, with Wake and how much they care about their goalkeeper, everybody's back, everybody's looking to put their body on the line to make a play. They have done well in protecting Kay Hill. Kay Hill, the third string goalkeeper on this roster. And to her shock, she is now the starter because of some injuries, and she has really stepped up. So and under the lights, she's really performed well. So far, just on the goal kicks, you've seen Ansborough take a few, and they're looking to play directly um, into either their 9 or the 10. So Murphy, obviously, they're trying to get her on the ball, but more specifically, they're trying to create a situation where the center backs have to step up in the midfield. This is sprayed up. Looking for a Tariel to run on, and, and a little too much weight on it goes out of bounds. It was a good idea, as that was intended to hit Izzy Cox. Cox, who played high school ball at Grimsley for a little bit. Very highly recruited. Of course, you know that. Are they the Whirlies? Is that Grimsley yes, Whirlies? Whirl yeah, the Whirlies. Great, that great name. <laughs> well, he's been notorious for putting out soccer talent. We've had a few draft picks in the NFL as well from there. Yep. Good athletic department all the way around. Tar Heels messing around with it, still knocking the ball. They've definitely had the possession game. As they now work to get into that final third. There's Darlene, and Darlene looking for a foul. The ref is not amused. And look at how many Carolina Blue kits are there. That ball was intended to go to Good Murphy. What there. a creative move by Shivoshi. Here's Murphy. You have to be able to play if you're weak. When, you, when you're in your own half, you've still got to be able to play and be not. You can't just smash it ball forward. That means just another attack is going to come back at you. So great composure from Zavoshi to make sure she's able to find a way out of a tough situation.
Deacons stringing together some passes. Here's Swanson. Swanson with plenty of space. Will she give the service ball on a platter? Here's Swanson. Great move. Left footed blast. And it's smacked down by the keeper. Yeah, Emily Allen. Excellent job on the switch of play. Again, the change of tempo right there. Now you get into the 1v1 situation. You know, for Swanson, it's on her left peg. She goes, okay, maybe I can have a crack at goal. This is also a chance that you're going to get the player across the top of the box. Maybe you squared across there, but you can't fault the player for getting her first opportunity and having to go at goal. Swanson is a player you can't sleep on. And she just put that on display right there. A clever move. Created enough space to put some pace on a shot. And was blocked and knocked down by Emmy Allen in the net. But Wake Forest has put together some positive trips into that final third as they'll try to send it to Swanson again. Love to see just the player, a player into her feet there. Let her run at her as opposed to playing in the space. She's obviously just made a run. Might be a little bit fatigued. Play into her feet there. And for Chapel Hill, you know, it's very similar to the game against Duke. They, they're almost overplaying into midfield where the back line of Wake has stepped up high. This, they're not allowing any gaps between their backs, midfields and forwards, but there is space behind for them to get in. It's just, that's one of the toughest things from a timing perspective to get the player on the ball and then the player running in behind to be on the same page. It almost turned into a Dennis Burkamp by Darlene. On spinning and trying to place that down on that first touch. Under a minute and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Still locked in level at nil-nil. Morris will supply the pressure. We'll see if the Deacons can pump one big ball close to that final third for the last 10 seconds of this match. Or this is the first half, pardon me, as Colton slides it over. Morris, not sure if she was trying to link up with Murphy, but it ends the first 45 of this match. Nil-nil, a chess match. John, you surprised by that? No, it's it, two very good coaches, two disciplined coaches as well. Um, you know, for Damon and for uh, Anson, they're looking to find ways to unlock a very stout defense. And for Tony, you know, you, you couldn't ask for a better situation going into halftime, other than maybe sneaking a goal on the set piece. But, you know, 4 2 4 doing really well. Well, nil nil. We've got another half to go. Be right back. yourself to rich Ghirardelli chocolate and luscious caramel. Experience Ghirardelli caramel squares in a bag and a bar. Makes life a bite better. Uh-oh. It's the Southeast Mini Golf Mixer Champs. Do anything cool this weekend? Mark. I just stayed in. That's cool. Yeah. Cleveland or South Beach, be the real you. Want to know why no one on Pizza the Hut? Pizza Hut meat lovers melt are filled with almost a half a pound of meat and cheese for just $6.99. Enough for two, price for one. That's why no one on Pizza the Hut. How good does it feel when Threshold Decor welcomes more seasonal style for less? When you when you get low prices on the latest trends. When rewards come with quality and coziness. That's totally Target. If you thought Monday Night Ball was big, wait till you see what's in our game plan at Toyota of Rock Hill. We're putting our all-star lineup of new Toyotas in motion with zero down, zero payments for three months, and zero cost maintenance. Backed by our rock solid guarantee. Plus, get top dollar when you trade or sell us your car. So experience football season in an MVP of brand new Toyota. From Toyota of Rock Hill, located minutes from uptown at exit 79. There's just something special about being in the postseason in general. 
Five seconds to go. Whips in from the corner. Punched away by Allen. It's a goal at the depth to die. There's a shot. And a goal. North Carolina breaking through. It's batted down, but not away. Gatino puts it in for Notre Dame. They got it down. From distance. Take a power man to West. Well, there it is. The ACC Women's Championship, October 29th to, through November 5th. And that is a tough tournament to get into. It is a tough tournament to win, arguably tougher than the national tournament. There's the standings. We went over that in the opening, but Florida State sitting number one. Notre Dame, who's been stout two. They are number two. Uh, Clemson with 16 points. Clemson won earlier. That's why they jumped Carolina has Carolina fourth, fourth on the standings, <laughs> but yet three in the nation. That's outstanding. So Wake Forest sitting seventh. So you see what that uh, tussle will be to get to that sixth spot with Virginia Tech right there. Wake Forest did beat Virginia Tech already, and so they will look to try to finish out the rest of their season. And so right now, this is how the tournament would, or the slate would be. We'd have Florida State, of course, Notre Dame, Clemson, Carolina, Pitt, and then Virginia Tech as the ones that will be represented in the six-team ACC tournament. Now, remember, it was nine, ten teams that made the NCAA tournament from the ACC last season. But here's where the road to Cary, which Cary also is the home to the ACC tournament. You see Pitt with that 13 points, very, very good team, and Virginia Tech with nine. Blake Force just sitting on that second level. Coach Deleuze knows it, and so does his team. They know that they're going through it right now. They know that points are at a premium. And I tell you, John, they, the first half, what they have done against Carolina is uh, pretty remarkable, been able to keep them from getting inside the 18. They've said, all right, you take some long shots, but we'll take care of the, the area. And uh, they've done a good job with that. And they've also had some good moments where they possibly could get on the board. Yeah, I think Wake sitting in a really good spot going into halftime. Obviously, they know how valuable a point would be. Um, you'd love to find a way to get three. No team has really been able to take three off of Chapel Hill on a consistent basis. So, and I think Tony really, really feel really good about that match, um, especially with, you know, they unfortunately dropped points against Syracuse, who you see only has one point, and that was to Wake. But for Tony, they also have Boston College coming up, who has... No points going to the league. Maybe they got a chance to steal some points in um, here and then obviously get a, get a nice win off the Boston College. There's a, there's a slate October 29th and see the championship on November 5th. There's a style conference. We got more coming up after this. Hey, Jamie. Oh, what am I up to? Just visiting a special secret client. I can't say who it is, but let's just say she bundled her dream house and her dream car for around the clock protection with Progressive. She has another house in Malibu. She's been an astronaut, an architect, a CEO. We're in front of her house, Dave. Well, I'd love to tell you who her boyfriend is, but I don't think I can. I'd love to tell you, but I don't think I can. Marty, look for it on digital and Blu-ray. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. <laughs> Milk chocolate beyond words. Classic recipe by Lindt. Now, discover the creamy, crunchy hazelnut bar by Lindt. Uh-oh. It's the Southeast Mini Golf Mixer Champs. Do anything cool this weekend? Mark. Mark. I just stayed in. That's cool. Yeah. Cleveland or South Beach, be the real you. Want to know why no one on Pizza the Hut? Pizza Hut meat lovers melts are filled with almost a half a pound of meat and cheese for just $6.99. Enough for two, and price for one. That's why no one on Pizza the Hut. How good does it feel when Threshold Decor welcomes more seasonal style for less? When you can, when you get low prices on the latest trends. When rewards come with quality and coziness. 
If you thought Monday Night Ball was big, wait till you see what's in our game plan at Toyota of Rock Hill. We're putting our all-star lineup of new Toyotas in motion. With zero down, zero payments for three months, and zero cost maintenance. Backed by our rock solid guarantee. Plus, get top dollar when you trade or sell us your car. So experience football season in an MVP, a brand new Toyota. From Toyota of Rock Hill, located minutes from uptown at exit 79. Yeah, with Metro, there's no contracts, no price hikes, no surprises. There's not a yada yada. Wait, Metro has not of the contract yada yada? Yada yada yada. With this surprise yada yada. Price hike yada yada. Yada 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 yada. Contract yada yada. And this yada yada. I don't know, kid. That one makes sense. Oh. Not a yada yada means wireless without the gadget. No contracts, no price hikes, no surprises. Only at Metro. Good turnout here on Friday the 13th. ACC Women's Soccer going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's a chess match for sure. Wake Forest in Carolina. Carolina third in the country trying to get back to the national championship. And they are level with Wake Forest, nil-nil after the first 45. Welcome to our perch. My name's Ty Collins, and this is my friend, John Pardini. Glad you guys could make us a part of your day or evening. And uh, John, it's just six shots between both teams. I'm still amazed by we're still sitting nil-nil. Uh, I know you've, you, you've talked about it before, but what are, you, what are your thoughts on how this has turned out defensively and offensively? Yeah, so both teams are trying to play through the lines, a lot of play in midfield, but within that, there's not a lot of space between those lines. And so, you know, with, with the way that Tony has shaped his team in terms of having a little compact uh, mid-block and then Chapel Hill trying to play it in there, there, there's just nothing but turnovers and little uh, little fouls or little mistakes. And a lot of a lot of start and stops, but uh, we've had we've had some chances, and, and we'll get a look at these right here uh, that possibly could have resulted in a goal. Yeah, first thing you notice is just great play by Cahill. Two really great moments to start her off the game where it comes out and claims the first ball. You'll see the save here off a ridiculous left foot peg from center. So good start for her, and then obviously the good strong defensive play from the Wake Forest back line. That's, that's Shavoshi coming up to help out her friend Brittany Cahill. Prop chances by Wake Forest. Good. Probably moment of the game there for Wake where you, you know, Murphy gets end line. Great little cut back. And then the dummy and then obviously the finish. You'd love to see a chance there to get a first time finish there. Some set pieces that usually will bode well for Carolina, but uh, the Knicks have done well of keeping that ball from getting him past the uh, post. Yeah, in fact, I feel Wake's been a little bit more dangerous. They've had those two deep services that have got, put pressure on the goalkeeper. Um, you'd love to see them get a few more chances in that. You can see the stats, just six between the two. Two for Wake Forest, four for Carolina. The possession, little uh, maybe that's a, to my astonishment that uh, Wake Forest had a little bit more of the possession, 52% to 48%. And you see the fouls not exactly balanced with Carolina with 12, Wake Forest with five. We've got a lot of drama in action here on Friday the 13th. It's nil-nil. We'll be right back here to Sprout. Go. Everything they've tasted until now was just practice for this. Oh my goodness gracious. These are the two sauces. Sweet and spicy jam. And the mambo. Look how that thing drizzle on there. The way it's glistening, stop. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Sweet and spicy jam and mambo sauce are on the McDonald's menu for a limited time. Oh my goodness. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Uh-oh. It's the Southeast Mini Golf Mixer Champs. Anything cool this weekend? Mark, I just stayed in. That's cool. Yeah. Clevelanders, some washers are a little basic. Mm, meh. 
but not this LG top load washer. It has a direct drive motor, which means more reliability and less noisy vibrations. Plus, it has a slam-proof glass see-through lid, so you can always check on your laundry. I guess you can have it all. <laughs> now that's good. Hey. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> An absolute gorgeous night. Nothing scary about this Friday the 13th. It is pleasant temperatures, and we have some great soccer on display between number three, North Carolina Tar Heels and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. We are level at nil-nil. And we've got some upcoming matches coming up on the ACC Network to tell you about. Of course, Boston College will come into town to take on Wake Forest. Remember, that'll be Thursday, October 19th, and Sunday, October 19th, Notre Dame in Carolina. That'll be, that will be fun. Number 11, North uh, Notre Dame versus number three, North Carolina. And then Pitt and Clemson, those two, 17th in the country, the Panthers. And seven, Clemson Tigers. And then don't forget, Thursday, It'll be Wake Forest going south towards South Beach and Coral Gables to take on the Miami Hurricanes, which, okay, sometimes you would say Miami, maybe that's an easy three points, but look at the results that Carolina had against Miami. It was just one nil, that was it. Yeah, there's so much parity within the league. You know, one of, easily one of the best conferences in the country. The amount of talent that exists across multiple teams in this, no game is easy. Yeah, it really isn't, and uh, that just shows you how uh, tough it is to even get into the tournament or the ACC tournament and seeing 10 representatives from the ACC to go to the national, the NCAA tournament last year. But the Demon Deacons, they know what they need to do. And so far, so good. Right now they sit with the point. It's tied nil-nil. But uh, we'll see how this will play out in the next 45. It is Friday the 13th. Not to get superstitious or anything, but crazy things happen on Friday the 13th. Could we see some wacky moments and something positive, say, for the home side against a, it would be a shocking upset against Carolina, number three in the country, as they look for their quest to get 23. That's their motto. John, going to get 23 in 2023. I think it's a little homage, too, to Michael Jordan, yeah. you know, number 23. Um it's an absurd number of championships in general. <laughs> yeah. uh, so having that be your motto, what a, what a nice experience to be a, a Chapel Hill member. Um, but super difficult when you're looking at the quality of teams that exist in this country right now across college soccer. Chasing 23 and 23. That's absurd number. You're right. Tar Heels in their Carolina blue kits. Tied nil-nil. Tar Heels want to get on the board early in this second half. And a ball played not exactly where they wanted to play it. And Cahill was able to cover that near stick. It's a good moment for them because I'm, I'm going to imagine that Anson's gone into halftime and gone, hey, listen, we've, we've tried to play through the lines here. Let's be a little bit more dy dynamic, a little bit more progressive, you know, and try and maybe play a few more, you know, along the turf and get some positive movement out of midfield. When you're playing a 3-4-3, you're kind of expecting one of your midfielders to at least join. And player like Sentner, you see her kind of moving out of midfield and making that run in the back line, which is super tough as a back line to deal with. Um, that's a good positive start for them to be a little bit more direct. So what do you think for Wake Forest as far as how they can possibly get on the board? We saw some positive moments in that first half. I mean, it seems like that outside wing has worked, and this is a very good turnover for the Demon Deacons. Murphy try to cut it back here. Swanson, and Swanson just got underneath it and sent it away from the target. I think if you're Murphy there, she's going to want to have that one back in terms of, hey, be a little bit selfish. She's 1v1 against the center back. Um, again, speaking to the, the matchup that we're kind of expecting here, Chapel Hill's going to try and play in between the lines, and that's really good discipline from Wake. Obviously, Murphy does a great job at cutting and screening off Meza, who's looking to receive on that. And then, you know, you'd love to see her just go. Go get after her and then unload that r ridiculous right peg that she has. Morris gets to start in the second half. And she came in off the bench. Hanks, who went out, she starts here in the second half. 
The Tar Heels have really done a good job of locking her down. She can be such a nuisance to the defense on the outside. Johnson all the way to the touchline, sends the long ball and not in the direction she wanted. It looks like they've changed just a little bit things tactically. They've moved Patterson kind of into that midfield along with Sentner. Della Peruta has now come out into the right flank trying to see if they get maybe Sentner running at those two center backs. Good poke away. Oh, Morris, clever. Morris sending this up, looking for Swanson. Swanson on the back of that Tar Heel defender, which is it's like it was Elgin trying to shut her down. Now the Tar Heels trying to open this up end to end. And Deke's able to usher it to Cahill. Here's Hanks. Go on, player. Hanks drew the double team, tried to spray it out wide to Johnson. Still trying to connect with Johnson. It's cut out for a moment, knocked out of bounds. Yeah, and that comes off this little switch of play. Good job, good hold, good job holding it up here. And then obviously you get the outside back getting involved and getting overlapping. Um, going to cause a little bit of problems for Chapel Hill in those wide spaces, especially when, you have, when you're playing 3-4-3. You're, that right and left midfield are asked to do a ton of running, and occasionally they get too far forward, and that's where you really want to catch them on the counter. Sintnor trying to play that up. It was played softly. And Wake Forest ate it up. Here comes Hanks. Hanks, she likes to pinch in. She'll play wide and then pinch in. Is trying to link up with Murphy. Yeah, it's pinched don't. in a little too tight. It doesn't look like they're on the same page there. Hanks looks like she's expecting her to go on the dribble, and then she's expecting to play it off. Bella Simber has come in here in the second half for the Tar Heels. Hanks watches overlap. Johnson to her left. She'll play it. So Hanks to Johnson. Johnson, Great nice service. curl ball to Murphy. She had a good look. And Swanson was late arriving too, which could possibly be, be the other wave of attack. And this is where Chapel Hill needs to be a little bit more dynamic there, right? It's a good moment. They break the line. You know, Wake's gone forward. Have to be good and in those moments where you're getting a chance to play forward. Catterson yeah. sees that, but the ball's a little bit overhit. Cahill came off her line. with a close in. And we're still sitting nil-nil. We've gone end-to-end -end a lot here in this second half. I think no goals to show. Temperature is a little bit cooler, too, which is absolutely gorgeous right now. If you're a recruit and you get a chance to play in North Carolina or any other place, I mean, how could you possibly pass up these kind of facilities, you know, the environment, the field, and then obviously the weather is just absolutely absurdly nice. We're here in Cicadas here mid-October. Uh, temperatures dip down a little bit. It is ideal, picture perfect. Under the lights here at Spry, and that'll be a free kick awarded to the Tar Heels. And playing on natural grass. Yes. This is amazing. Oh, look how gorgeous the field is, the pitch. Avery Patterson is the one that got knocked out. Patterson, whose great uncle played for the Rams and in the Hall of Fame. The NFL, the other football. The spaces have just opened up a little bit. The tempo is picked up in terms of the combination play, in terms of the ability to switch to point of attack. Hopefully get some goals here. Well, they definitely have come out firing both teams. We first saw the Tar Heels. I mean, they were shot out of a cannon there in the very beginning of the second half. And... Didn't come up with a goal, but then Wake Forest answered back and had a good look themselves. Shavoshi, she's been stellar all night. Trying to link up with Murphy up ahead. Tactically, things look a little different. Chapel Hill's made a few changes here, so gone to like a little more like a 4-2-3-1, and it looks like that left back is going to kind of either come inside and invert um, in those transition moments. See how Murphy held the ball up. Swanson into a pocket there. 
It's deflected and moves over to Hanks. Hanks has switched sides. She'll try to use her speed here, looking for an option. And it is going to be a goal kick. She ran out of real estate. She had the idea. She was trying to get passed on the, with her speed and then try to clip that in the air for somebody to run on. This is for all young players. When you get into these wide areas and you're in the final third, closer control when it comes to just your first, second, third approach. You don't need to necessarily get in. She uses great pace, which she has, um, but obviously you'd love to have force the defender to have to deal with you. So even if she can't get in line, she chops it back. Now she can outplay a little bit, maybe draw a foul or something like that. Um, but you'd love to see most young players just take a little bit more time and a little more close control to make sure the ball stays with them as they're getting forward. And sometimes with the electric atmosphere like it is tonight. Yeah, Some of that show. extra adrenaline goes, right? And the touch is a little bit heavy. And for her, she's got yep. so much pace. Hanks now back to the left side. Johnson coming in. Gets the turnover. Can she create something? Trying to link up with Murphy. Here's Malika Mina. Good use of the width there. And the Deacons have really used that space. Something Coach Deleuze told me they want to use every inch of this pitch tonight. And Mina's vision, too. She's the one that kind of, you know, player doesn't have to initially be out there. She's kind of looking out there, and eventually a player will go, oh, that's where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> this is going to be a two versus three here. And it's the center. Sentner trying to hold it up and immediately tracked down by Dempsey Brown. An overlapping run into space is well done by Moxley and Moxley. We'll send it, but no problems at all for Cahill. Cahill, if she's nervous, she does not look it. She has done a very good job on that line. Not at all intimidated by number three, North Carolina. Let's take a look at that. Just tapping it a little bit to that right. That angle is not where you want it to be, but at least trying to maybe test the keeper. Yeah, when you're working in training, a lot of times there's no defenders in there. So you get as a winger, you know, you cut to your right. You look to play directly across the six-yard box where the, you know, the unopposed forward is. But now as the game gets a little more difficult, you add in defenders, you know, and especially Wake's back line who does a really good job at getting deep early. Now the space is more on that little cutback where you're looking towards the penalty spot or even further towards the top of the box. Now the Deacons have pulled back on their pressure as the Carolina Tar Heels working around the back now here comes Morris trying to disrupt that back line yeah it's a direct play there good run out of midfield from Patterson if Sentner is able to get a little flick that will cause a lot of problems she's not really built for that way um, she likes things to feet but Morris oh on that turn looked like she had a pathway fortunately for the home side it does work in their favor is Hanks looking for that switch to link up with Swanson. Really good defending by De La Rose to get out quickly and get pressure on their first touch. Shavoshi, she has been an animal tonight. She has come way from that back outside back position and has caused a lot of chaos, helped out offensively, and she is just not shy of contact at all. Here's Hanks. Slides it over to Swanson. Swanson looks up, does have some targets. Here's Swanson. And Swanson may have tried to get that to curl a little bit out on that outswinger, but immediately stopped and caught by Emmy Abbott. And it's the same exact moment now for Wake where they get in line. The space is not across the six. It's that little cutback. You see Murphy kind of pull away from her center back. If she lays that off and receives that around the penalty spot, it's going to be a very good chance. See the shots on goal three. For the Tar Heels, one for the Demon Deacons. Looking Check. at Wake, one of the things I think that they've done a good job is by try, trying to drive balls into Murphy's feet. What I'd love to see her start to do yeah. is maybe post up on the center back, kind of like in basketball, you can shield a little bit, and then use that first touch to eliminate the defender. So far, when she's gotten received things to feet, um, one, she's kind of kept her touch right where it is, and that allows the double down you know, or the second defender to come over and deal with that player. So you'd love to see her maybe use that first touch and put it behind the back. Talia de la Puerta it comes in. It comes that press. That's so vicious. 
Chavoshi won an offside call. And now Carolina playing back to the support, then sends it. Looking for Patterson, and Patterson had her head up trying to send it. Little nervy moment in the build out, but that's to be expected when you're trying to be a possession oriented team. Nothing wrong with trying to build out. Obviously, you, where you lose the ball, if, it, if anything, at least it's in a wide space, but certainly going to happen, especially when you have the pace of Chapel Hill, their pressing ability. Going to have those moments. There's a corner for the Tar Heels. Good opportunity for them. Deacons have yet to get a corner. This is the third for the Tar Heels tonight. We'd love to see a ball roll to the top of the box here. Little dummy. High arcing ball. Looking for that far stick. And it was hit. But it's out of bounds. Last touched by Oik Forrest. Yeah, so if you're scouting Wake here, you see they've got all 11 players inside the penalty area. And so if you can get a runner across the line and the ball on the ground. See this again. Yeah, it looks like it was Shavoshi who got the last touch. She wasn't protesting. Good defending by her to fight. Especially not, you know, put it back in your own net, too. Adela tough tough facing that way. Della Rose was lurking on that out, that uh, far stick. That'll be a corner. Sintner, driven. Two hops in the box. Gets outside of the area. And then scooped up. Flag stays down. And it's going to result in a goal. Nobody around. Sent over the top. And there was Patterson to pounce an attack. As Wake Forest shocked that the flag didn't go up. It's, it's a second phase of the set piece. Obviously, the ball gets played across. You know, back line kind of steps out. You watch. You watch the defenders here. Everybody gets attracted to the ball. All the eyes there. You get the player on the back. You see the timing of that movement. Looks like, yeah, it looks like the right back keeps her on there. Good first touch from very, Patterson to finish. Tight, tight margin there. And able to execute. The fans not happy with it, but Patterson with her fifth goal of the season in the 59th minute has given the Tar Heels a 1-0 lead. Just a little lapse defensively from, from the back line. And, and, and to be fair, everybody's got to be accountable for that. When the ball gets played out, everybody gets their eyes on the player that's serving, but usually it's that runner that's dipping in behind uh, that becomes the issue. Kudos to Chapel Hill for kind of re-hunting and re-getting organized. Um, the ball is, is perfect and gives Patterson the chance and then obviously just the, the little cleverness to the use of disguise and finish. Isabel Cox returns to the pitch. And now the Deacons... We'll have to chase the game here. Down 1-0. Dempsey Brown gets her pocket picked. And the ball sent over the bar. So with all the opportunities we've seen by the Tar Heels, the one that they score is kind of a scoop ball or clipped ball over the top that uh, had Wake Forest back line thinking it was going to be sure to be called as an offside position, but no flag stayed the flag stayed down we'll take a look at that again and it resulted in a tar heel goal and the wake forest faithful showing their disagreement with the line judge take a look at this one more time see where the ball is yes yeah, the right back that keeps her on yeah the ball's already played so she is on and so the only thing is if one of the players caused the keeper to have a obstruction of view, but that's that's tough. To, yeah, I, to I think that's yeah. I think that's asking for She it, well, yeah. Patterson did a good job of how she made that run. She first came back, and that allowed just enough time for that ball to be released. She was on. You're right, John. It kept her on and she was able to finish. And it's only the player that's impacting the ball that really needs to be onside. You could have seven people offside, but the one that's the one scoring and making the run is on, and it's on. Uh, i got to give credit to the line judge, though, because nine times out of ten, you've seen this, is that you see that many players behind that back line, they immediately throw the flag up anyway. Yeah, and I think coaching, edu sorry, referee education has gotten significantly better over the years in terms of their ability to go one 
hold and make the correct decision by waiting and not putting the flag up immediately. And then two, really analyzing and giving your brain time because the processing time between when the ball is played to when the actual moment happens, and obviously as a linesman, you're running up and down the line. There's a bit of fatigue and element there, so you can easily make a, a decision in rash. But I think the referee education over the last few years is great, and they do a really, really good job at kind of getting their brain on the right wavelength. Very similar to like NASCAR drivers when it comes to looking and, and really being uh, focused on your eyes there. Let's be honest, I don't want that job <laughs> to have to call offside. It's not the, yeah. not a fun job, especially when you got the fans behind you too, giving you all kinds of kinds you, of nudge. You really do need like that extra referee that has a bird's eye view. So balls played, balls played in the air, and then you kind of find out where the target, where that ball was, the target was, and then. But even that's tough. I mean, the computer gets it wrong with VAR yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so right, I mean, that's right. It's really tough to be a, a referee. I don't know if VAR helps them at all. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's way worse. Wood and Johnson sending this one across. Johnson trying to keep it down on the attacking third. The Deacons searching and hunting to make this even again with Carolina leading 1-0. The fifth goal by Avery Patterson has made it 1-0 in favor of the number three team in the nation, the Carolina Tar Heels. I think this next kind of five to 10 minute period will really speak volumes to the character of who Wake is. Um, they've had a tough, tough couple weekends going into this game tonight. They're obviously going against the number three team in the country, and now you're down a goal and a half. Now the bright lights shine down on Spry as the Deacons will have to ramp up their game and look for an equalizer. For Chapel Hill, you really want to turn this into a little bit more athletic contest, really push the tempo a bit, see if you can go get that second goal to kind of take the will out of the opponent. Cox. Now Carolina knocking the ball around. Cox looking to put that one to her right, trying to find Moxley making that run. Good movement here. Eggs. It's a little 2v2 game if they can. Small couldn't quite get there. It will be a throw in for the Demon Deacons. Well, good movement from both Murphy and Nikayla to kind of expose in that little space along the wide area. You'd love to see just the ball just have a little less weight to make sure that only your player can get to it. Twenty six minutes remaining in this contest. A goal in the 59th minute by Avery Patterson, the senior captain from Jacksonville, Florida. Five goals, two assists on the year. She was United Soccer Coaches forward to watch coming into this season. It's Abby Colton putting her first stamp on the match in terms of physicality. <laughs> Patterson got the Tar Heels their first goal this season. Comes up with a crucial goal here. I think the adjustment against Sentinel a little bit higher up the field. and Instead of picking up at a midfield looking to combine, now she's able to run at the backs. It's been a really good change from Chapel Hill. The Deeks have to lift their head and not look at the scoreboard. Just continue what they were doing. Unfortunate that they... Let up that goal. It was questionable at first, but Patterson was clearly on. And so far, they've showed good resilience. I mean, you talked to some of the players even after the match the other day against Pitt. Um, it was all about staying together. You know, they didn't feel like those games represented them in the way that they wanted to. And, you know, they're also young players where they've had academics and midterms during those early weeks. And then you go five days on the road, super big challenge for them. And I think coming back home, they've showed a good resilience so far. So I expect them to keep fighting throughout this match. Small. For all the double team was looking to send that ball to Murphy. She was... Alone in space there for a brief moment, but could not quite reach her. It does result in a corner kick for the Demon Deacons, the first corner of the night. Yeah, I think this is going to be a huge moment for him. We'd love to see the service give someone like Ansbro a chance to kind of impose herself on the game. Chapel Hill without Macy Bell, not necessarily exceptional in the air other than her. Um, this could be a 
prime moment for it. You see them already stacking players in the goalkeeper, putting a lot of pressure near and around Emmy Allen. Shavoshi has a very, very good touch, a good feel for the ball. He's going to have to send this one in nicely. I mean, picture perfect. See if the Deacons can knock one. I wonder if they have a little pass out right here. Looking to level it up. Here yep, is the dummy. corner. The dummy and a shot by Mina. She scuffed it. Yeah, you, kind of, you kind of see it building up as just the communication between the players. Played off to the wing. Shavoshi stays good on. Ball. This is a good ball. Sent there right in front of the six for anybody to pounce on. And it somehow escapes. Yeah, great job getting in line. And then she picks out the right player, which is Ansbro. She just misses it. Um, sliding across there. Deacons okay. having to dig deep inside. That little cutback is so hard to defend as a player because you're moving back towards your own goal and then you see it cut back to the top of the box. It's, it's, at times you feel helpless. Trying to go over the top again this time, searching for Izzy Cox. Johnson with a half volley clearance, but the Tar Heels right there at the halfway line. Meza, who's been somewhat quiet in this match. I like the adjustment to the 4 2 3 1 for Chapel Hill because really, Wake is only the one pressing player has been Emily. So you can go 2v1 as a center back versus that number nine. And that allows you to get her an outside back a little higher at the pitch, and especially because Wake, historically, this game has been trying to cover up the midfield. Wake Forest had some numbers. And was taken right back by the Tar Heels. Here's Patterson again. She tiptoes inside the 18. Good moment from Della Peruta there on the recovery in midfield. She's been excellent so far in this game. Been a little physical, picks things up, and then looking to create a little bit with some of her teammates. Sets Patterson up for a nice little run there. Surrounded Cox. All she could do is play the support. And once again, recycled back for the Tar Heels and then sent that one over the top, but nobody at home. And that ball was played by King. Still is a good ball, just that nobody kind of made that run. Then is it a good ball? Just somebody had to run. You, know, you, put, you put it put it right there in that 18 for somebody to come on. But I feel like when you play pickup, you play that ball a lot. Yeah, I love that ball. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I love that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Any ball I can bounce right in front of the six, right? It is always nice, yeah. and you can ping a ball in the air. You watch it float. Patterson. She wants to ping it. Gets past Mina. And this time, flag goes up. Offside position. Not sure who was on offside position. Looked like it was possibly Darlene. Murphy's had some good movement forward so far. You'd love to just see her get rewarded. She's starting to get a little frustrated just body language-wise in terms of her movement and not getting on it. Carly Wilson has re-entered the match. Alex Wood has gone out. The Deacons are sitting on a point. Until the 59th minute. And the clock ticking under 20 minutes. Pickens hoping to see if they can find the goal to bring back to level terms for the Tar Heels. Excellent Ball. job from Nikayla just to make sure it stays with her. Trying to send that one across. Commentator's curse there. <laughs> Colton running on, Swanson trying to keep that in play. Last touch by Atario, so it'll be a throw in. Good strong physical play from Colton, intercept that. Start to see her hobble a little bit, taking a few knocks, throwing her body around. 
again, talk, Tony talked about it before, just having tremendous heart and physicality and um, gives everything to the team. Tar Heels are without the services of Macy Bell tonight. She did not start. We have not seen her in the entire match. Crucial part of the back line, too, for Coach Anson Dorrance. And Deke's playing with her third string goalkeeper, Peyton Cahill, who has come on and has done a fantastic job for the Demon Deacons. I think so far King and her have done a really good job of just making things come. Um, when they've been tested in those 1v moments, they've done a good job. And then obviously in the build out part, they've been excellent. Kaya Haynes will enter for the first time tonight. Clock ticking down. Close to about 17 and a half, 17 and a half remaining. I think around the 10 to 12 minute mark when you're down a goal, you might see just a, a few tactical changes. I do think that Wake has had a few moments where in transition um, they can unlock, especially when they look to play into those wide spaces. You see Nikayla Small has kind of moved a little bit more towards the left, left flank, um, like to get her on the ball. And then obviously Emily, Mur Emily Murphy running across that um, once she's gotten on it. Another set piece opportunity for the Tar Heels to add another goal. They are not closing down shop at all. They definitely searching for another goal just to feel just extra comfortable. And regardless of the result, the positive signs you're looking at for Wake moving into the next few matches is just the commitment to work. It's hard defending, it's hard in transit. Like there, you've got players that are doubling down and looking to make second moments. It's very good signs for them for the rest of the conference play, regardless of how this goes. Meza. Not on the same page there. Trying to look and play that on the far touch line, although Darlene moved in. And now with the shift to the 4-2-3-1 for Chapel Hill, if you're awake, you're going to have to be a little bit better in possession. You're going to need some special moments in terms of quality of going left to right, up and back. Um, you're going to really need to make sure that you're not putting yourself in transition where you're defending again and you're starting your attacks a little bit higher up the field. Meza. So smooth on the ball. Of Mexican descent. Uh, plays with it. U.S. national team, just like many of these players on that Carol on this Carolina roster. I'd expect to see Tony kind of put maybe another attacker up to play closer to Murphy, especially as we get a little bit later into this match. Right now, she's a bit isolated, especially with Chapel Hill having a little bit more possession in the attacking half. You see what the referee will decide here is it's Shivoshi. Going toe to toe, and Shavoshi gets a yellow card. She has been just relentless tonight. And that was clearly a yellow card on Shavoshi. See, <laughs> immediately throw the hands up and ask for it to the referee. You know you saw that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, it, uh, Shavoshi's had a great ha a great game so far. She's shown really good physicality. That's going to happen when you're an outside back. You're put on an island a lot. You're going to have to deal with these situations. It's not an issue when it comes to the yellow card, especially it's her first. Um, but the thing you love about her is just her physicality and her toughness and her compete level. And that was Ribimbus, also a freshman. Carolina. Another long distance shot, but nowhere near the frame. So obviously with no extra time, you're gonna wanna see the tempo, especially when the ball's out of bounds, a little pick up. You wanna see, can Wake start to like increase their speed in which they act. You need every little second when it comes to college soccer. 
Deacons eight, two, and three on the year. Two, two, and two in the ACC. So against the four, two, three, one, you're gonna to wanna to see these two center backs, see if they can, one, oh, let me let this play out for a second. <laughs> against the, definitely nervous. Yeah, nervous, against, nervous well against moment. the nine, you've gotta you've got to play a little bit more central and you wanna see one of the center backs kind of go on the dribble in a central space, but when the left or right forward presses you, you've gotta bump it out to the outside back. Hanks re-enters, Small goes out. And the Deacons looking and searching for a hero. So they've kind of moved Murphy to what looks like the right flank. Maybe she see if she can get isolated in the wide area. Small's kind of moved up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The Kaya? Yeah, Kaya has come in. Small has gone out. Yeah, so Kaya gets more towards her natural left flank here. And I think she's going to need to be dynamic to a little bit crate on her own. You'd love to see her do it in a wide area to kind of set up some service. Clock becoming a factor. If the Deacons want to tie this up, Hanks with the intervention fell down. It will be a free kick right there in the center circle. There we go. It's a good change of tempo, too, even on the free kick. Get numbers forward. Dempsey Brown saying, let's get this thing going. I'd love to see just a ball pinged right into yeah. Murphy. Get her isolated on one of the smaller of the two center backs and let her go and create. She has been sandwiched between the two center backs tonight. It's very seldom you will see. Yeah, you got Anthro coming some, forward here. Space. She's the target. You're going to look to maybe flick off her, create a little second chance opportunity. Shavoshi. Good ball in. Good rotation. Coming up, there's a chance for Murphy. Murphy, another chance. Murphy scores! Is. Murphy, Murphy with an equalizer with 12 and a half remaining. You just have to love football, man. There's so many storylines about that kid going through that kid's head right now against your former, you know, former team. Excellent composure. Just you see the ball striking technique once on that second moment there to get it, drive it low. Good for her, man. Murphy with her sixth goal of the season against her former club. And the Deacons and the Tar Heels are back at level terms, 1-1. Murphy, two chances, and she finally gets it past Emmy Allen. Yeah, so a little miscommunication there, and, and maybe just you'd love to see Emmy Allen maybe go for a punch there as opposed to claiming it, or, the, or be a little bit more vocal so that the center back who's recovering lets it go. And obviously the good save on the first one in terms of Allen or the recovery, but then the second chance effort on the knockdown again. Forwards just seem to find that, especially those true number nines. The best ones always seem to find the ball in those right moments. People talk about it being luck. It's about just the game instincts and where the where the play is going to be if you want to score. Well, you called it, partner. You want to see Murphy kind of get the ball in between the two center backs. She had to get another chance, and the second chance was it. The service, though, was excellent. It puts both, again, you want to see interaction between forwards, backs, and the goalkeeper, and it just happens like that more often than not, where good service causes the issue. In the 59th minute, it went 1-0 Carolina. The Deacons. Excellent touch. Needing one of their heroes to show up, and that hero wearing the cape is the former Tar Heel, Emily Murphy. Nice little chance there. Della Peruta with an excellent first ball in. The combination play on the one touch causes the issue there. We're able to get behind the back. You'd love to see the volley from Chapel Hill to get down on top of it. She kind of reaches her leg out and just the sheer physics of your body and how the mechanics work more often than not, it's going to either miss it or go over the bar. The Deacons with a little extra life too after tying it up. And if you saw Murphy's face, she's not at all satisfied with a draw here. Right now, you got to be wondering what the conversation among the Wake Forest staff is going. Okay, do you, you have him <laughs> you come back? Do you now go for it here? Do you sit in? You get your point. I think if you're a player, you're like, yeah, let's go, go on. We'll see what get the more numbers forward. Does Coach Deleuze? Good ball in. That is a beautiful ball, Swanson. He was just out in front, Swanson having to create 
as Hanks was in the area. And now Chapel Hill desperately trying to clear it. Just under 10 and a half to go. And we are tied 1-1. A late goal by Murphy, her sixth of the year. Tied it up at one. The other conversation you'd love to be on the pitch for is right now the one between the Colton sisters who are standing next <laughs> to each other. As the game gets a little more intense. All that love goes out the window of it. And I'm not a twin, but you have to think there's, they're both thinking the same oh, yeah. thoughts, right? Oh, yeah. But you have a sibling, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, but the twins are so different. It, it you know, they just, they're almost living and breathing the same heartbeat. It's respect and then rivalry all together. It's a, knowing from having a brother that's two years younger than I am. It is. We smile, make sure we pat each other on the back, but when we're doing anything that's competitively, it's competitive, it's going to be a war between each other. Whether it's how you mow your lawn, <laughs> I mean, it's, it never ends. As an adult, those competitions are a little different, <laughs> yeah. right? That's right. How's your portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> Good step by Andra. Still with it. The captain plays it back to the support. Here's Morris. Morris, good look. Swanson, dancing. I think people are more important on their, uh, their fantasy team nowadays yes. than the portfolio. It's true. That is very true. I'm too embarrassed by mine this year. 0-5, oh, and, and you get an A-plus by, uh, by the website after you draft? I mean. <laughs> See Colton getting a lot of play praise, both from her teammates and the coach. A really good shift that she's put in, put her heart on her sleeve, and excellent performance from her. Mina. The Deacons have shown no signs of kind of parking the bus and being satisfied with a draw. They want that upset. And the Tar Heels know that's exactly what they want. Really good defending there in a 1v1 situation that was tough to deal with. Johnson came back, was able to knock the ball loose. Under eight minutes to go. And now for both teams, it's about being really safe in the buildup. Tough play there, and Mina is shaken up. The referee will stop play and bring the ball back here for a set piece. Nina grimacing. Surprised they didn't play advantage. The ball against the ball went out of bounds. Is that why I pulled it back, John? Yeah, I think yeah. you'd also probably prefer a service here. Right. One, you get a chance to slow the game down and, and get some numbers forward, especially you see King. Uh, is that King? That's a um, oh, other center. Oh. You see her. That's what it was looking for. She's been excellent. You'd love to see you get her a chance right. to you know, get forward. And as a center back, when you put all that work in, you, want, you just want this one moment. Clipped in. Oh. Far stick and a half volley that goes over the bar, but a gasp by the fans here at Sprite. And the Deacons dodge a bullet. Let's take a look at it. This is well played, too. Yeah, good service in. Ball kind of falls to the back post. You'd love to see her get on top of the volley here to finish. Fortunate for the Demon Deacons. That's Fossey. Sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona, who has been lurking on that far stick. And now getting into the six-minute mark here, you just want to be really safe in your buildup. You don't need to win the game in that mark. Hanks can show her speed. This gets past a little miscommunication that does work out for the Tar Heels. That could have been absolutely devastating to the Tar Heels. And the Deacons trying to get that right back into the final third. Here's Mina. So everything you're about here is all about safety. Safe, don't need to be overly clever. Morris, an offside 
flag is up. But not sure if they're going to call that if it was on Morris or not. Swanson was not happy with the call. A nice touch, nice idea there by Izzy Cox. Just nobody running there on that right side. The Tar Heels with nine shots. The Demon Deacons with five. But we are level 1-1. One, one. In the closing minutes of this one, can the Deacons hold on to a point or possibly steal three? The Tar Heels, they want the three points too. The flag is up on an offside position. I believe Izzy Cox was the one that was on the offside. A couple of scary moments on these services. Ball's played into the penalty area. Obviously, 88, 85th minute so far. Um, legs start to fatigue a little bit. So from a defending standpoint, you want to get into good position. You want to make sure all your clearances are in the right position. Don't lose your composure within this. The Deacons answered back with Murphy. And the equalizer making it 1-1. One, one. Back to holding on to one point. Good play by Kaya there. Points are desperately needed. Excellent. By this up. club. And that is a good use of space as Shavoshi sends this one into Great the 18. Service. Murphy is there. Here's a deflection. Swanson has a good look. Swanson gets knocked down. And the fans are calling for some help here by the official. Swanson did end up on the ground. And I'm not sure what, if there was contact. Of course, our guys yeah. always awesome in the. Lovely Studio. service and technique. You see the ball kind of out swinging and drifting away. Causes Allen a lot of issues, especially because it bounces right before. Great defending on the on the goal. Just cover up your keeper a little bit. But really like the play of Kaya to just show a little bit of extra patience instead of going forward there, switching it and finding the right play. So what the fans are upset with is Emmy Allen, who came out a little late on that tackle to clear out Swanson. What a wicked hop, though, to knock off the chest of Allen and almost created an opportunity for the Demon Deacons to take the lead. We speak about it a lot, but Ansbro's had an excellent game again, just providing a lot of cover against two really, really pacey forwards. Johnson, good skill. Hanks. Oh, I don't know. Allie. Referee said it was off or out of bounds, although it seemed like the full rotation was out, but that could be wrong. I think we'll trust him from up here if we okay, get the offside. That's right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you say that now. I can't wait till you're back on the sideline as a coach. I'll say the same thing to you. <laughs> it's way, <laughs> you know, way easier to do it from here. <laughs> that's right. That's Good a, job by Cahill. As a coach, your brain's just so skewed. <laughs> Anything to get a scheme for an advantage, you'll take. Do you ever go back after some of your matches and say, okay, I was being a little ridiculous on some of the yelling that this was off, this was a contact foul, foul. I think no matter what, you're dealing with the same same people on a consistent basis. So your relationships with both referees and, and even the opposing team's coaches have to be excellent. I think it speaks a lot to, to your character. And you're looking at Deleuze and, and Dorrance for their longevity and, and what they've done. They, they've certainly had their moments where they feel like they've got the wrong end of it, but. Those are relationship builders, and those are people that have good, good care. Wow. Flag stays down. Looked like she was most likely in an offside position. And the Tar Heels once again building as that ball. They don't see that often, but gets away from Meza. Great defending there. And here's King. Deacons with a minute and five seconds remaining. Is there one last trip down to the final third? The Tar Heels may get another look. Good step by Mina. Outstanding work by Malika Mina. She spins, sends this one up and looking for Hanks.
Answell for the unlucky heavy touch through off the line is Cahill. Brilliant goalkeeping by Cahill to come out and immediately smother it with 23 ticks remaining. I think the story will, a lot of people will look at the, the missed chances, but I think a really better one for, for today was just the play of both teams' defensive work ethic, the 1v1 battles that have existed. Jenkins, after thinking that the one point was gone away for good, they turned to their new member, former Tar Heel, Emily Murphy. She put on the cape and said, we're not done. I'm getting that point back. She scores the equal.